a man saints. Uh, if 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 you you don't mind, Bazalwani, you know I, I think it's really been um, uh, some time since I've seen almost every one of you. Amen. So for those who don't mind, just just turn on your camera just to say hi, Bazalwani. Amen. So I can just see you uh, as I'm about to welcome the speaker. You can turn it off um, as soon as we welcome the speaker. Amen. I just wanna see all of you, Bazalwani. No. If you can, no. you can just turn it on. How Bazalwani? You see, my feet. Uh, we have the most supportive exec, Bazalwan, uh, that which will always turn on their camera first. <laughs> Hallelujah. I at yeah. least remember Bazalwan. Um, I just want to welcome the speaker for today. I mean, Bazalwan, but before I do that, let me just read a scripture with you. Um, can you open the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 13? And then you are just going to read verse 13 and 14, Bazalwan. Hallelujah. I see hi guys. I see I saw I am I under hi I under um I see you Bazalan. I see faith I see tiny hallelujah can you just open our Bibles in the book of um second Corinthians chapter number 13 verse number 13 to 14 for those who don't know me Bazalan, my name is Gif Maling hallelujah and I am a uh, by the grace of God and by your election the chairperson for Kev, amen. So let's just read um, scripture and then we just welcome the speaker. The Bible says from verse 13 of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says, all the saints salute you. Verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all, amen. Yeah. So, Bazalwane, if you read this part of scripture, you recognize that this scripture is speaking of three things. Firstly, it identifies with the grace of God and then uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says the love of God and then it says the sweet for the, the communion of the Holy Ghost. So it introducing the relationship of the Trinity of God. But there are people who might then consider this to actually be a hierarchy in itself to say that it is only Christ that has made a grace available and it's only him and then it is only God that loves and maybe they say that as they say today that and um, we have the Holy Spirit and therefore when we pray we are supposed to only identify with the Holy Spirit and not with God amen and they say that he's the one you no know, Jesus is sitting on the throne which is um understandably true but um I think today we are just then trying to understand what is then the relationship between the Trinity of God we are trying to then, uh, uh, can you please mute the mics, Tiny? Can you mute the mic, please? Amen. So, what we are trying to, to, to address, Bazalwan, is to understand what is the relationship in the Trinity. You know, what is the relationship of the Trinity? Is there a hierarchy in the Trinity? How do we even relate to the Trinity ourselves? Because this scripture then tells us in itself that um, 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 it brings a certain knowledge of the Trinity of God and how they are related, you know. And I think that we just need to then understand if there's a hierarchy, you know, how do we identify? And therefore, to address the session today and to make to bring the knowledge of that, Bazalwane um, is the former chairperson of the CAF, Amen, Bazalwane. Um, a, a, an inspiration to some of us, um, a leader of note, Bazalwan, hallelujah. So um, without any further ado, Bazalwan, please um, help me to welcome the speaker for today, um, Mr. Javelo Ndo Bazalwan, JP, as many of us might know him. I think I might have called his name wrong, Bazalwan, so he'll correct me if I did. But let's welcome um, the former chairperson of KEF, Bazalwan, uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can clap your hand, Pastor Lan. Uh, you can unmute, clap your hand. You can say it. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, Chair. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Amen, sir. We can. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, greetings. Be greeted, everybody. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, we are happy to be here. Uh, I think. Firstly, just to congratulate the newly elected leadership. Um, 
do you do you still have vacant vacant seats? Yes, we do. Are they a lot? In exact as two, but in council a lot. Oh, okay. Yes. No, no, no. We just wanna congratulate you um for 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 taking up a leadership role. And we really pray that the Lord um will be good to you, give you wisdom, insight, and understanding. Actually, let let's just say a word of prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the newly elected leadership. We know that no one can assume leadership except it is by you. We thank you that you have placed in their hearts desires that are in sync with what you want to do in this time. Um, challenging times, you know, um, trying to get back on campus and have church the way we used to have church. Um, work work from the ground again. Um, the momentum was killed by COVID, so we have to get back on the ground and work tremendously hard. But we we depend on your power. We depend on your wisdom, and we believe that with this leadership, Father, you will you will achieve. You'll help them achieve those things. Give them strength to lead in such a blurry times. But we know. We know that this is time where leaders are made. So I pray that you grant them that portion of greatness, oh God. And I also pray for those that are still timid, um, not taking up vacancies. I pray that you give them boldness, Lord. And I pray that you call many to take up the positions that are vacant. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Um, yeah, uh, congratulations, leadership. And uh, greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, um, so excited to be here. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do justice to the to the to the theme. See the problem of having preachers as chaperons when they do their when they do their biblical research on topics that are difficult and they don't find answers, they call you as a preacher to come and answer their questions. Uh, now we have to be talking about the Trinity was a lot. Um, I really thought gift loved me. I After I threw the Trinity my way, I'm like, this guy surely doesn't love me. Um, but but it is well, it is well. Uh, before I go into it, let me let me properly recognize my fiance. She is here. Um, uh, that's my fiance. Oh, yes. I'm getting married. Um, and um, sorry, Jesus. My sisters, in the name of Jesus, that are here. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I think she's the one who's laughing. <laughs> Oh, glory. The one who's laughing. We were fighting, <laughs> we were fighting before this, this thing started. Uh, yeah, now we are we are fine. I'm pretty sure she's listener. We'll, we'll fight after this. Amen. Um, but otherwise, be greeted. Thank you for being here. As Gift has already said, we are tackling um, Trinity the doctrine of trinity and i'm 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 really i'm really just going to be throwing it um just going to be throwing what i have um and hopefully where you are you'll be able to pick out uh one one or two things that will, will be beneficial to you um in the name of jesus so um, this 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 discussion can take either form, you know, because it has been a it has been a debate in Christendom for such a long time. Um, if you date back to the times where the Catholic was at the pinnacle of the church, um, and there were movements that were starting to rise, you know, you hear of of debates around the Trinity that came some were coming against the the doctrine of the trinity um some came to 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 solidify it using scripture 
but it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a subject with such with such a huge and deep history um because one of the things which is a weak argument one of the things that makes the the the, the for many this an um, offensive you know an offensive discussion is that number one the word trinity is not even there in the bible um but i mean you you can't use that as a, as a as a as a reason to say that this doctrine is false um so those were some of the debates that erupted then that were humbled very quickly um then there, there are some who are just it's a difficult inherently it's a difficult concept to 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 it's a difficult concept to to handle you know um to understand you know uh, because we are talking about one god who is three and still one and the three are god and you know it can it can get messy but i'll just be throwing some thoughts across to you and um, try to uncover a couple of principles from scripture um try i'll try by all means to bring it home you know because this can easily take um this can easily take a lecture but i i i really desire that it really does not take that form um but i try to contextualize it bring it home uh, try to explain the persons of the trinity how we can relate to them because i think what is important at this time is that our relationship and our understanding and our walk with god becomes better every day and and what more what more of a tool to assist in your walk with god than revelation um, so i hope some of the things that we're going to be throwing here are going to assist you in your practical journey practical understanding of your work with god praise the lord um so as i said the the trinity uh it, it, it's not there in scripture the word trinity is not there in scripture but it's a word that is being used to try capture a to try capture a reality that can be seen as a thread across scripture so another word that is not in the bible but is used to is is is, is used as a doctrine uses is the, the word rapture read the whole bible you're not going to find the word rapture but there's an entire doctrine on rapture because the rapture is just simply talking about being caught up um you know snatching away and all of that um trinity comes in the same sense it's not there in the bible but it's it's the word that tries to capture this whole um, mystery of how god is one yet three you know how he is three yet one so the word trinity was then coined to try house all of that meaning it is it is particularly dif difficult because um you are trying to to pull out or to understand a plural from a singular right you're saying god is one but in god being one you want to then say that he is three right and we're just going to try to manage around 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 that um but basically what 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 we we are trying to 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 say he god is one in essence and when we say in essence we 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 are referring to his nature his nature of being holy his nature of being divine his nature of being eternal his nature of being all knowing all of those attributes that make god god are his essence right then he becomes three he becomes three in person or expression um manifestation is not really a word that captures what we're trying to say but on a lazy day we would say manifestation as well 
but particularly person. He is one in essence, but three in person. Um, um, he is, he is so, so, so. He is the father, he is the son, and the Holy Spirit. It will pull out some scriptures to prove, to, 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 to prove all of that. But what we can already say is that the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit are one in, 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 in essence. All of them are holy. All of, all of them, I can say both. All of them are eternal. They are divine. They are all-knowing. They are powerful, right? So when we speak of the essence of God, that is the that is the attribute of God. That that those are the attributes of God that we're talking about. And He is three in persons. Is speaking to, in Him being one, there are distinct personalities or persons that He 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 embodies. Right, being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you read the book of Genesis one verse one, it says that in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the 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 the, 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 the so in trying to track down carefully, um, in a in a in a traceable or in a there's a word I'm looking for, in in a pro, not proper. I'm looking for for a nicer word. An authentic, an authentic approach to biblical interpretation. One of the, the the tools that you can use in this text is the law of first mention. That when you are trying to trace down a subject in scripture, it is it is it is it is prudent that you go back and trace it from where it was first mentioned from, because probably that's where the the purest form of its uh, the purest form of its use and its meaning and its context comes from and every where it is then used in scripture after the first time must either be outwardly tweaked or like like if if there's a change it must be very it must not be hidden otherwise the law of first mention says that Every time that word is used, it must be consistent with the first time it was mentioned in scripture. So what we then see here is that when it says that um, in the beginning, God. So you and I, the moment we say, because we, we the God is singular yet plural, the moment we, 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 we hear that, we then think of the singular God type of a thing, if I can put it that way. But when you then go to the original text, the, it, it, it's in the beginning Elohim. Now Elohim is in the plural sense. It's it's not singular. It's plural. The the, the singular for Elohim is Eloha. That's the singular. So and the Bible does not say in the beginning Eloha. It says in the beginning Elohim. So it already it already introduces us to the to the person of God being plural and not singular. I, I, I hope we're following. Um, and then from there, across scripture, we have this theme. Pastor Martin would say, would say we have a thematic expression of, we have this theme where God always has conversation within himself and where there's this theme of let us, let us, let us. You know, when you read the, the book of Genesis 126, God steps in and says, let us make men in our image. Let us make men. So he didn't say, let me, you know, he said, let us. Again, the, the, the plurality, the pl plurality theme still follows when you read the 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 the, the book of genesis 3:22 after the the men had had fallen the bible says that god then comes and says now the man has become like one of us knowing both good and evil is one like me one like us 
right? One like us. When you read the book of um, Genesis 11, those guys who, who were doing the tower, um, and then God sees, he says that, let us go down. Let, let us go down there and scatter their languages. The, this, this theme of, of let us, is, is, is vivid right at the beginning of scripture. And it, it really introduces us to the, to the fact and to the, to, the, to the narrative that in as much as God is one, there is a plurality of persons that have the capacity to deliberate on matters amongst themselves, that have the capacity to speak. They all have cognitive ability. They Cognitive ability, yeah, yeah, we're first students. They can think, they can handle, they can interpret information. It it speaks to 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 God having persons in there that have uh, their distinct abilities to retain, interpret, process, and communicate information. Right, the, one of the best expressions to that has been coined by Bible students to try and make this mystery relatable to the human mind is to coin this word called he is a triune God or triune being, saying he is Trinity, yet he is united, he is one, right? Triune God. So next time you want to sound deep in prayer, just say our triune God, we pray. That will be a very educated statement. When you read the book of John, first John chapter five, verse seven, the Bible says that for there are three, this is John, for there are three that bear witness in heaven. And then he says the father, the word, and the Holy Spirit. And then he ties the entire thing to one another. He says, and these three are one. These three are one. The, 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 the narratives that are trying to explain the, 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 the Trinity, you know, because it's such a, it, it can be messy. I think there's, there's, this, there's, this, there's this thinking that I think is offensive to arithmetic minds which says that one plus one plus one equals one. Uh, I think, yeah, R.C. Sproul says that's just bad arithmetic and let's not use it to defend Christianity. But it tries to capture the fact that in as much as God is one, he has three persons, yet he is one. Hallelujah. The same expression comes out when you read the Great Commission where it says that Go therefore and make of all and make disciples of all the nations, right? And then it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It does not say baptizing them in their names. So had it said names, we we in as much as we have three persons, we would then distinguish that perhaps. We also have three distinct essences or essence. But it says that in the name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which shows that in as much as there are three persons, they can be referred to with one name. That three saying the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can be categorized as one name because they are one. Right? They are one. Hallelujah. Now, I'm almost done, by the way. The, 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 the first personality that I want to, the first person that I want to zone into um, in, the, in the Trinity is the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father. Who is the Father, the Father? Um, the, 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 when you when you look at the Greek when you look at the Greek um, when you look at the Greek the the concept of father means a a generator a generator or an originator 
an originator or a source, right? A, a, a generator or an originator or a source of something. So the moment you bring the concept of father, you, 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 you are relaying that dynamic of God that generates things. You are speaking of that concept of God that originates things. You are talking of that dimension of God that is a source of what we see here. The, the father dimension of God is the dimension that is source, right? That is source, that is originator. It is the dimension of God for, from which we come out as the offspring because we were originated by him. He, he, it is the dimension of God that is author of life, right? And when you read the book of John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. And then he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Right. So one of the things that we then see um, secondary to, 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 to the father dimension of God being the originator and the source and the sustainer is Jesus bringing here another dynamic to say that no one can go to the father except through me. What he then brings us to is that the father is that dimension of God that we are all trying to run to you know that it's that it's, it's that dimension of god that we 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 in in our deepest quest it is that dimension of god that we want to run to and jesus here is just exposing the fact that you cannot go to him except you pass through me and we'll, we'll deal with jesus very soon but what this does, it, this dimension of the Father of God, the, this dimension of God as Father, it exposes that dimension of God that is crying out for relationship, right? Because he, we, we are the very essence of him. We were we were we were removed we were extracted yeah extracted the right way we were extracted from him right and we were extracted from him by his design and as a function of us being extracted from him by his design he wills he wills he desires to relate with us right so the dimension of god as father over and above being source it is that dimension that is willing to have relationship with these entities called human beings that were sourced directly from god hallelujah right um, 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 it is 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 in the it, when we look at the the dimension of god being father it is where we we source our identity because we were extracted from him. We, we, are, we are his offspring. In as much as we say that we come from God, but the, the dim, that dimension of God that directly speaks to our identity is the dimension of the father. Hallelujah. The, the, the dimension of God being father is that dimension of God that we pray to. Right, Jesus, when he teaches his disciples how to pray, he says that pray like this, and then he starts, Our Father who art in heaven. Right, so the Father is the dimension of God that we pray to, right, because he is that entity of the Godhead that is crying for, for, for. For, for the original relationship. He, he sourced it. He sourced it. He, 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 it's that dimension of him that we come from. Hallelujah. And when, when, when Jesus was also talking about fasting, he says that, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. But 
only your father, right, who is unseen, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Again, another thing again. The dimension of father is that dimension of God that we speak about God as a rewarder. For they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is that dimension of the fatherhood of God. It is the, the, the source dimension of God. It is the rewarder. It is the rewarder dimension of God. Hallelujah. Right. So when we speak rewards, when we speak rewards, we are dealing with this dimension of God or this person of God that is the Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Amen. he is, what we also then see in the New Testament is that the Father is the person of God that the son tries to do all to impress. The son, by all means, wants and desires and is built around the approval of the father. I have come to do the work of my father who sent me. Um, 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 when, when we go to, to, to the garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. That it, it is it is the, the what one of the things that the son the son dimension of god showed us when he came to earth is that he suppressed his will to to fulfill the will of the father right and, and he he does everything to impress the father and the father has been heard saying that this is my son you can't say son when you're not father, right? So we can we can we can agree beyond all doubt that when after the baptism, when the when the when the heavens cracked and there was a voice that says, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That was the father speaking to say, the son came to teach us to do all we can to please and to appease the heart of the father hallelujah so we we must we must be as believers set our hearts and posture our hearts to be pleasing to the father dimension of god because that is where we have been sourced from that is where we are sustained that is where we have our identity our origin everything is from that father dimension of god hallelujah um it it is it is that dimension of father um, um that 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 when when the bible says that in the in the beginning in the beginning in the beginning god in the beginning god and then in in in, in the book of revelation the bible says that um i am the alpha and omega the beginning and the end so basically if you are to, if you are to do a substitution there you you won't be wrong if you say that in in i get the beginning you just said i'm the in god god created so the substance which was used to create what came in genesis 1 is god himself thy dimension of the father is what is source in everything right so when he when he extracted and when he created everything he did not look any for any he did not look for anything outside of himself to create everything that is seen because yeah now himself as the father he is the source of all things hallelujah so he he ah the dimension of god being father i, I want to drive this to you to say that is the source dimension of god that is that is where the riches of what is is comes from the dimension of the father hallelujah because of time sure. let, let us go to the son right but basically when we come to the son one of one of the things i must observe is that the, the one of the reasons to be quite frank with you one of the reasons why the, the 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 doctrine of the trinity has been attacked it's because the pursuit of the attackers of the doctrine of trinity are not attacking the godhead so to say they're not trying to 
they're not trying to say God is not, right? They are not trying to say God doesn't exist. They, 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 most of them really, when they really put proper thinking brains, they, everyone admits that there is a superior being somewhere, right? Who's in, who everything was sourced from. But one of the reasons why the doctrine of the Trinity has been attacked, it is because of the sun, to be quite honest with you. It's because of the sun. Why? Because the sun is the only time where God, this superior being, tabernacled in a human body. And many people are offended by that. To say that the son cannot be God. I, 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 because the moment we come and converge at that truth, every religion and every entity that people bow to has to fall, right? It has to fall because sure. we are not just talking about a person that was used by God. But we are talking about the most difficult thing to conceptualize that this massive God can come and compress himself in a human body, right? And be subjected to pain and be subjected to the limitations of what nature brings, right? The reason why the Trinity has been attacked is because of the claims that the son made when he came to earth. The, 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 the unbalanced and unfe the, the theologically uneducated statement that Jesus was 50% man and 50% God. Jesus was not 50% man. He was not 50% God. He was 100% man, 100% God. Try to make sense of that if it doesn't make sense. Just try to make sense of that. But Jesus is the rock of offense when it comes to the Trinity. The reason why the Trinity has been attacked so much is because everyone is trying to undermine the divinity of the Son, right? And then when we talk about the Son, John clarifies this thing very properly because he says that in the beginning was the Word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So what John is doing, John is taking us back to origins. John is taking us back to realms that nature does not allow us to engage. Because he is talking to realms that we have not related to with our physical senses, because he's talking about a place where we were not. Right, And then he ties Jesus Christ right there to say that in the beginning, right in the beginning was the word. And it's not a thing of when the beginning happened, the word came. No, it's a thing of when the word came, beginning happened. So what actually yeah. starts is the word. And then we have our relative beginning. Right. But the beginning of beginnings is God because he is source. Of all things. Now, in that source of all things, there is the word, right? So, yeah. Jesus, I always say that Jesus, you are somewhat late when you want to understand the person of Jesus and you start when he is born of the Virgin Mary. You are late because this is a this is a being that precedes all creation, right? He he actually he is that working force. That made everything to be because the word that was used there for the for 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 the word word is the word logos. I know there's a lot of word word everywhere, but the word that was used in the original text for the word word in John one, when the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word word there is logos, and logos is speaking to logos is speaking to. Wait, come down, JB. Logos is speaking to the dimension of the thinkings and the thoughts of God, the dimension of the speakings and the utterances of God. Now, Jesus 
is not just a human being who came to be savior. He embodies, he is the embodiment of the imaginations of God. He is the embodiment of the speakings of God. That is why I think it's Paul who then comes and says that in times past, God spoke to us with his holy prophets, but in our time and day and age, he has spoken to us through his dear son. It's because Jesus is the logos of God. And one of the dimension of the logos is the speakings and the utterances of God. So the very fact that God was able to compress himself into a body in the form of a son is already a speaking to an entire generation. Ah, if, uh, even if Jesus Christ was mute and he came to the earth, he is already a message from God speaking to an entire generation of a lineage of people because Jesus is the embodiment of the ideas and the speakings of God. If God is to say anything, you can trace it through the person of Jesus Christ. And the reason why the Trinity has been attacked, it is because the Trinity, what it does to Jesus Christ alone and not to any other starter or originator of any religion is that it exalts Jesus Christ not to just being a special person but to being God himself. He is core equal, core eternal, core powerful. What happened is that Jesus then just exposed the sun dimension of God is the pinnacle, the highest point of the humility of God. The source of our humility, when we're always being uh, 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 encouraged to be humble, it's not a foreign concept to God. The pinnacle of God's humility is the sun dimension of God, where he, yeah. he, he was able to compress all of himself. Hey, all of himself. I can't, hey, I can't think of it how Something that came from your being and you compress yourself fully in it and you subject yourself to the limitations of that very thing. It took on, great humility, great humility. Basalane, when we ask you and when Bible, the Bible asks us to be humble, it is asking us to tap into a dimension of God, the standard for humility is not the people we see around us. The apex, yeah, the yeah. zenith standard of God's humility is the son of God because that is where he, the Bible, Paul says that in him, the, 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 the fullness of the Godhead dwelled in him bodily. How, how, how humble. How humble can God be to compress himself into a body like mine and yours? And this is what kills it. He was doing it for you and I. <laughs> he was doing it for you and I. But today it's not for that. But hallelujah. Right? So he has spoken to us through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Jesus is an entire message. To a generation and the reason why he is rejected is because he is a message god spoke to us through his son he he is whoo, he in genesis 1 when we read about and god said let there be light right that light there was not speaking to the sun because we see the sun and the moon being created on the fourth day Right, we see the sun and the moon being created on the fourth day, but the Bible says that let there be light, and there was light. And it has been troubling me this thing. Ah, what's happening, man? And I've been trying to understand. And as I'm going through this thing, one of the things that came to me is that the original, the original, the way it's structured, it's not that let there be light, it was a command to say, Light be. What God said was light be. So that scripture you read to say, and God said, let there be light. It's simply saying, and God, and God said, light be. And that be there is 
is is is was speaking to to the fact that light expose yourself now light manifest yourself now light come into the picture it was not yeah. an indignation yeah. of jesus it was a calling of jesus to the scene to say light come on now we to for us to restructure the world we need to do it from a place of illumination and revelation and you are that dimension that carries the revelation and the illumination and the light of god now manifest yourself right and then it says that and then it was the first day and the second day and everything why do we have the first day second day without the sun it's because the sun is the ancient of days so days originate in him hallelujah right oh, the man. sun man. is that dimension of god the sun and the moon sun and the moon are entities that have been delegated to to, to, to sort of like show us another dimension of God that provides illumination, but it is housed in the person of the Son of God, right? It is God who encompasses all of knowledge. That's why we say he's all-knowing. All of knowledge is housed in the Godhead of God, if that makes sense. And the personhood who carries that, who is that, who embodies that, is this person called the Word, who is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. He he then came as a substitute 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 <laughs> substitute ish. Yeah. <laughs> he came as a substitutory uh Bazalan, help me. He came as a, a <laughs> and a sacrifice to substitute, right? We all know the, the Garden of Eden story where um, 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 we 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 lost the consciousness of that dimension. Oh, hallelujah! We lost the consciousness of that dimension of God because we are created in the image and in the like. We originate right from the substance of what God is. His spirit was blown in us. Our DNA and our veins ran the identity of God. What we lost, we did not lose the identity of God. Ooh. We do not lose the identity of God, Vazalane. Every human being, saved or unsaved, they have the identity of God running in their veins. What we lost is the consciousness of what we are. And he came to be the sacrifice to redeem our consciousness into that dimension to say that we are a substance of God. Hallelujah. And when God says that, the day that you eat, you will surely die. We died to that consciousness, right? We died to that consciousness. Hallelujah. So the, the son came as a sacrifice to, 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 to meet the demands of divine justice. That the Bible says that the, 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 the life of the flesh is in the blood, right? The, the life of the flesh is in the blood. You get that principle. I think it's in Leviticus. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, the life of us here as individuals had to be redeemed now for that to happen blood had to be shed because you the, the moment you talk life you talk blood right now the blood had to be shed and someone had to die to redeem all of this life that was lost because life is not breathing in and out <laughs> life, is not breathing. life is the knowledge of god hallelujah and and who, who, who best to come and be a sacrifice to, to, to bring us back to life than this dimension of God that encompasses, that is the, 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 the embodiment of the thinkings and the ideas and the very life, the Zoe life of God. I'm going to jump a lot of scriptures because of time. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. One of one point as well. Yeah, time is telling me. How much time am I left with? Two percent. No, you can you, you can have ten minutes. Ten Think minutes. That's what Thank you very much. So one of the things that the sun that is so peculiar about the sun is that one of the things the sun teaches us which is extremely humbling, is that the sun showed us that in as much as we are natural or we are living in the natural, 
we can live here and live out the very essence of the thoughts that God has about us. Hallelujah. One of the things that 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 one of the guys I love so much, Pastor KG, that he details so much is that one of the things that make it difficult that 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 disqualify Adam from being a standard is that Adam was created a man. Adam just came and he found everything to be. Now, one of the things that Adam cannot mentor you in, Adam cannot mentor you into the process of becoming. Adam cannot mentor you in the process of you were you you were you were in sin and you were born again. Now you must start racing back to origins. Adam cannot mentor you in that because Adam came and his kingdom was already sorted for him. Adam didn't have to share any woman. His woman was made for him. Adam didn't even have to try to discover his purpose. The moment he was made, decrees and declarations were already made. His estate was already um, presented right before him. He was given the capacity to handle everything that was given under his care. What Adam cannot mentor you, Adam cannot mentor you and to how do you grow in the knowledge of God? How do you how do you speak about the faithfulness of God? How do you how do you still grow in the midst of your limitations, in the midst of your of your weaknesses in the flesh, in the midst of your 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 how to learning how to pray, in the midst of learning how to relate with the Father, knowing the Father, knowing the Spirit? Adam cannot mentor you into all of that because he came as a king and he already had a territory that was marked out for him, and everything was responsive to what he said. He came as a man fully matured. But what the son does is that the son can mentor us into the process of becoming. The thoughts that sit in the mind of God, that if we were to take now and match them against the manifestation of what you are, you will see a very great difference. What the son does for us is that he can mentor us from what we are into becoming a manifestation of what sits in the mind of God concerning us. That is how we relate with the son. Right? That is how we relate with the son because he he understands, he understands our limitations. He understands our infirmities. He understands what we cannot do. Now he can mentor us. He can, that's why when he speaks of the Holy Spirit, he says that he will remind you of the things that I have taught. The Holy Spirit does not come to teach us new thick stuff that is outside of the curricula that Jesus Christ has given to us. Because Jesus is that dimension of God that can mentor us back to our God class. Amen. Let's finish with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not an angel. The Holy Spirit is not a wind. Holy Spirit is not a power. Holy Spirit is a person of the Godhead. Holy Spirit is his description. It's not his name. But it's not wrong when you refer to him as Holy Spirit. But his true nature. See, the very same way we're saying Jesus Christ is the Son. The, 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 the original description of Jesus is that the original name of Jesus or the original essence of his person is that he is the word. Now, the Holy Spirit, the origin of Yena is he is the spirit of God. He is that life giving spirit of the Godhead. He is that spirit that makes the Godhead the Godhead. He is that dimension of the Godhead that makes the Godhead unlimited. He, ah, uh, he. Ooh, he, he is, ooh, he, he could, in as much as Jesus came to redeem, he is that dimension of God that can connect us, oh, that can make us homes of God. That, uh, that, that he, 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 our spirits and Yena can be intertwined, in, intertwined 
and be one. He is he is that dimension of God that is extremely relatable to. He's that dimension of God that has been delegated to live with us on a day to day. Oh, my 10 minutes is over. He, he is that dimension of God that we interact with on a day to day basis. He's that dimension of God that is reminding of reminding us of what 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 were the mechanics around the divinity and the humanity of Jesus? He is that dimension of God that is constantly teaching us and reminding us what sits in the thoughts of God concerning us. He is uh, he is that he is that dimension of God that has been delegated for this time to walk with us daily, to be housed in our bodies, to be that that counsel of God, to 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 have God as your advisor. He is that dimension of God that has been delegated for that. And the 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 the, the, the thing I will I'll end with just because of time, two minutes left. When you read Romans 8, verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what you're supposed to pray for the way you are supposed to know, right? But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I want to zone in on the say, likewise, the Spirit also helps, helps, helps in our weaknesses. The Greek word that captures that happening of help there is the Greek word sunanti lambano, sunanti lambano, which means to lay, to grab hold of something alongside, right? to say that the Holy Spirit alongside us grabs hold of the things that we desire in prayer and he labors with us in prayer with groanings that cannot be uttered in words that we understand. That's why then Paul says that when we pray in the Spirit, our understanding is unfruitful. But how big in the spirit, we speak mysteries, right? It is the function of the Holy Spirit that enables us to pray the will and the mind of God. I understand that as you pray in the spirit, your mind will eventually catch up and you will begin to pray the desires of God in words that you can relate to. But it is the spirit of God that transports us to that frequency that we grab hold of the things that we are supposed to pray for. Our minds cannot take us to that dimension, but alongside us, he holds us with himself. And then he takes us to a realm where only divine beings can access. And then we begin to utter things that speak to origins. We can begin to utter things that are hidden from the normal human mind. We begin to utter things that are, that, that, that are eternal, that we find ourselves being manifestations of the will, the thoughts, the purposes, and the intents of God in this time. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not forget that we have a dominion mandate. We have a mandate to dominate the earth. We have a mandate to subdue the world with the kingdom of God. Now, the Holy Spirit is that dimension of God that has been delegated to grow us and to mentor us into that process of becoming. Hallelujah. Sunanti Lambano. Alongside us, we grab hold of the things that we ideally would not understand. But alongside us, the Holy Spirit with groanings that cannot be uttered grabs hold of us. The Holy Spirit, Samuel spoke about this and Dan spoke about this, says that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. You can be anointed with the Holy Ghost. And he spoke of the, 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 the practice of anointing and rubbing on the oil and how that speaks to intimacy. The Holy Ghost is that dimension of God that we can grow in intimacy with on a day-to-day -day basis. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have spoken to us. Thank you that you have spoken once, but we have heard twice. Thank you that even after this, this word will keep rolling, rolling in our spirits, that you are calling us unto a place of revelation, illumination, understanding, 
and intimacy with your Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus that let this teaching change our perspective, change our minds. Thank you that you are taking us to a new dimension and we thank you for revelation. We thank you for substance. We thank you, oh God, that let this word be relatable to all of us in our spaces. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Chaperson, I'm sorry I chugged your time. Um, Y'all need to study. Um, but otherwise, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's quite a scary honor. Um, yeah, I hope I answered all your theological questions. Thank you, sir.